John chapter 20, verse 19. Now, this was the account after the resurrection. And amazing things took place here. But let's go ahead and read it. John chapter 20, verse 19. It says, Then the same day after evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. How many of you are glad today? Come on, how many of you are glad today? Amen. But verse 21 goes on to read. It says, so Jesus said to him again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you you I also send you and when he had said this he breathed on them and said to them receive the Holy Spirit receive the Holy Spirit Heavenly Father we come to you this morning and Lord we thank you for your presence that we sent here today and Lord I just pray that you would move to the hearts of your people Lord Father, I pray for those ones, God, that maybe are just recently given their lives to you or come back to church, Lord, oh, God, that you would just speak to them, encourage them, Lord God, lift them up today. And I pray for that one, God, that may have been serving you a mighty long time, maybe feel a little dry today, maybe feel a little discouraged today. Our God, I just pray that you would reignite them, stir up their faith, stir up the fire that you've given to them, Lord God. God, that we would be the church that you've called us to be. So, Lord, today I just ask that you would use me to minister your word. We pray this all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a good, good praise this morning before you see it. Look to your neighbor and tell them, now what? You may be seated. If you want to put a title on this message, I guess you could call it that, now what? Or... You can even put a title on New Beginnings. New Beginnings. See, this was the account after the death and resurrection of Jesus, our Lord, after Easter. And there's a question that many people, it could rise up within their life, is now what? What do I do? You know, last week uh, or this Wednesday, you've heard our pastor share that we, the, on Easter, we had about 90 decision cards that gave their lives to Jesus. Give the Lord some praise this morning for that. That's powerful. And those are the ones that we were able to catch. And you may be here today. And I want you to know that you're in a good place. And now the question may be in your heart, now what? What do I do next? What's the next step? And here at Victory Outreach, there are many steps that we have in many places that you can get involved in to begin to answer that question or to begin to start your new beginning. Because whenever you give your life to Christ, it's a new beginning. It's a fresh start. And anytime you have new beginnings, how many of us know there's some new things to begin to do? And I remember the day that I gave my life to God and began to come into the church house. There were some things that I didn't know. Actually, there was a lot of things I didn't know. I didn't grow up in church. I wasn't raised in church. I didn't know what church was all about. I remember just going to church on Easter and going to church on Christmas, getting an Easter basket and getting a Christmas present. And that's all I knew. And so when I came to the house of God, there was a lot of learning that I had to do. And so, but I'm grateful for the church. I'm grateful for the ministry because who I am today And the principles that I stand upon today is because of the house of God. My children have been raised in the house of God. My grandchildren are being raised in the house of God. My marriage is flourishing in the house of God. And it's all because of the house of God where God has begun to do the work in my life. So Jesus appears here in this portion, and you can read it later on in chapter uh, 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 chapter 20 and starting there in verse 1. But Jesus appears to Mary and the disciples, and Jesus goes to them, and he shows himself, and he gives them instructions. And why does Jesus 
come so quickly to show himself. Because I believe that people have a tendency to go back to doing what they've done. And, and there's an important uh, 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 part of when you get your life to God that you, you got to get to the house of God. And that's why I'm grateful that you're here today. You probably came Wednesday and you'll probably be coming next week and you're going to probably find a way to begin to get involved. And I believe that that's very key. That's very important because if we don't do that, then some people begin to have a tendency to go back, to go back to things. And that's not even just for new people, but that's even for people that have been serving the Lord a mighty long time. You stop coming to church. You stop serving. You stop doing things. You have a tendency to drift somewhere else. And that's why Jesus said, go, I send you just as I was sent. Look to your neighbor and tell him, it's time for you to go. No, look at him in the eye and say, it's time for you to go. Not go out of here. But it's time for you to go just as Jesus was sent to spread the message, to give people hope, to tell people about the peace and the love of God. It's now up to us. It is our time to go to tell people about the goodness of God. Now, why is this important? Because now as believers and as Christians, we have a work to do. We have a work to do. And we should not keep what God has done just for ourselves. And sometimes as new believers, or those coming back to church, we, we need to be able to respond quickly. And one thing I've learned is that when, when I first got saved, I, I, I needed to tell somebody. See, when I got saved, I was, I was in the county. I was locked up, for those of you that know what that is. Amen. And so automatically, I, I had to tell somebody. I, I had to tell my wife. She was my girlfriend at the time. We already had two kids. We weren't married. But I had to tell her. I got on the phone. I had to tell her. When she came visit me, I had to tell her. I had to tell her what was happening. And there wasn't even an encounter that happened within her life. It, it was God set up, God ordained, because when I had gotten saved, her brother had taken her to church. And there was something that was stirring within her life. And she began to tell me the same thing. And then we began to have a fight right there in the visiting room. We did. We had a fight right there in the glass. And, and I began to tell her, I'm going to go to this church. She goes, no, I found this church. I'm, we're going to go to this church. I said, no, no, no. We're going to go to this church when I get out and this and that. And, and we, we started arguing right there. And then, you know, as humble as I am, I gave in. And, and uh, I said, okay then. Well, I couldn't do nothing anyway, right? I'm in a red jumpsuit. She put money on my books, right? I said, all right then. Well, what church are you talking about? She goes, my, my brother took me to this church, and my aunt is there, and my cousin is there. And, and I said, well, what is it? She goes, it's Victory Outreach. And I said, wait a minute. The church I'm talking about is Victory Outreach. Because Pastor Alvin would go in there and preach the gospel. Brother Alvin would go in there and preach the gospel, and they were from the ministry of Victory Outreach. And, I, again, I didn't understand. I didn't know what was going on. I said, okay, then, if, that, if that's the case, I want you to find this guy. He comes in here, and he, and he preaches. He comes, and he delivers a message. So I want you to go and, and, and find him then. You know, I, I needed proof. I was like, Thomas, I needed proof. <laughs> and then so she went, and, and, and sure enough, she found him. He was there in the church. He was serving. He was one of the ministers serving there. She came back. She says, no, I found him. And then I seen him on Sunday going over there. And he said, hey, I met your, your wife or your girlfriend, you know, and she's there. And, you know, I know, your co- I know her cousin, and I met her brother and all these different things. And then after that, you know, we visit again. He said, okay, this is the church we're going to go to. But we had to begin to say it. We had to tell somebody. We had to tell those ones closest to us. And, and I got news for you. If you've given your life to God or you recently came back to the Lord, you got to tell somebody. you got to be excited about what God has done in your life. And you've got to begin to respond to that tugging upon your heart. And as we begin to respond to that, that call and that message, something began to stir within our life. 
And I, and I remember even while I still had a, a, a little bit more time there that I had to do, I was still going to court, I, I began to share with the brothers in there, and I began to get involved with Bible study. And like I said, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what was going on. And, and all she began to do, my wife, was begin to go with her aunt and her cousin, get involved with church. And, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, we, we, were, we came in rough. We were raw and rough. If you look at some of our old school pictures, man, we, it was like, man, my God. God is a miracle working God. And, and, and God began to work on us. But we, we, had to, we had to just dive right in. We had to get committed. We had to just dive right in because we knew that if we didn't do that, then we knew we would we'd have a tendency to begin to drift. And so what do we got to do is we got to respond. What do we respond to? Well, the Great Commission, Matthew 28, verse 19, it says, Go, therefore, and make disciples. Of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now watch this, verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And see, Christ, what did he do? He came into this world. He came in as a servant. He came in and emptied himself out. He delighted to do his father's will, and he went about doing good, and he did everything in the power of the Holy Spirit. So there's a game plan that you and I can follow after. There's a game plan that you and I could begin to follow after, and that's why it's so important that we just go ahead and, and just dive all in. Just like Brother uh, Pastor Eddie had said when our pastor began to approach, he said, man, I'm all in. What do we need to do? And I believe that's the kind of spirit we've got to have is that when we come to the house of God and we get saved, we need to be all in to serving the Lord. Because when you were out there running amok, you were all in. You gave everything. You gave your money. You, you, you gave your kids clothes. Come on, somebody. You gave everything. You didn't care. And how about now when God saves us and turns our lives around, shouldn't we give, shouldn't we give it all? Shouldn't we be all in for God? So the body of Christ and as new Christians or even as veterans, we have a challenge. And you know what that challenge is? It's to be an example for God. It's to live for God. Just the way that song said. You know, if you knew where we came from and, and our life would live for God, then, then I, I believe that we should be those examples that God's called us to be. Even as we begin to approach this National Day of Prayer, even as you begin to go throughout the, 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 uh, uh, San Diego and you go into your workplace and you go into those places in the community where people begin to see you, God has called us to be an example of God's goodness. And as we're those examples, then God will use our lives to make a difference. And I know for some may be here today say, you know what, I, I, I'm not as polished as you. I, I haven't been saved that long. Well, listen, you just do with what you got. You just share with what you know. You just give what has been given to you. Say, man, I just recently got saved. You know, I went to the streets the day I got out. And I didn't even understand it. They said, go to the streets. They said, come with us to the streets. Some of you be here today and say, well, what does that mean? What does that mean? Go to the streets. You know, that's Victor Outreach lingo. Go to the streets. That means you're going to go on the street corner. You're going to have a bullhorn. You're going to have some flyers. You're going to begin to pass it out and tell people about Jesus. And I remember going to the streets that very first week when I got out. And, and you know, people, I, I didn't know what to say. I didn't, I didn't know much about the Bible. I didn't know anything all I knew is that something happened right here inside of my heart. And all I began to tell them is that, you know what, I was hurting. And somebody told me about Jesus. And there was something that began to change within my life. I surrendered. I said the sinner's prayer. And now I'm here today. And if God can do it for me, he could do it for you. I'm no longer on drugs. I'm no longer locked up. I'm no longer messed up in my mind. I have a peace in my heart. And if you want that peace, you can have it too. I, I, I wasn't nothing biblical about that. All I did was just share what was happening inside of here. 
So there's no reason why we cannot tell people about the goodness of God. Tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your brother, tell your sister, tell your co-worker, tell your boss. I went to church this week. I went to the altar and I said the sinner's prayer. I gave my life to God and I don't feel the same. And if God could do that for me, he could do it for you. You share with what you got. So today what I want to do is real quickly... I want to just give you three S's that will help you serve the Lord. Three S's that will help you serve the Lord. The first one is this, is surrender. See, now what what, 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 what do I do? It says, now we surrender. See, when you are surrendered, there is a peace in your life. You may have you may have went through this week and 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 you may have felt a little different. There's been a peace in your life, regardless of what you were around or regardless of what you experienced this week, but there was a peace in your life because of the decision that you had made. And the disciples were locked behind closed doors, afraid. And some commentaries say that the disciples were afraid that Jesus was there to judge them because they failed him or the people had failed him. But Jesus wasn't there to, uh, to judge them. But what did he say? He came and said, peace to you. Peace to you. See, Jesus is not so much worried about what you didn't do as much as he's worried about what you will do. And now we have a new beginning. We have a fresh start. So now there's, a, there's an opportune time for you and us to begin to do what is right and to do what is good. Now, I know we're going to make mistakes. And, you know, we'll fumble the ball here and there. You know, there's still some rough edges that are in our lives. Listen, don't get so caught up on that. What you got to do is just focus on doing good. Live for God. Read your Bible. Pray. Get connected. Let somebody encourage you. Man, when we first got saved, uh, man, there was a lot of cleaning up that we had to do. There was a, there was a lot of work, man, that Pastor Halvin had to do in my life. You know, God used him. Very special men of God used them in a, in a very special way, you know, but I wasn't the only one. My wife needed a lot of cleaning up, too. She'll be the first one to tell you, you know, I know she's, you know, peaceful and humble and gracious now. But man, back in the day, she wasn't always like that. You know, you look at us today. We weren't like that. We were rough and raw and, you know, you know, filthy language. You name it. We were we were messed up. And so. You know, there was some work that needed to be done on us. But the thing about it was is that we were willing. We were open. All we knew is that we were tired of being sick and tired. But what happened was is there was a peace that came upon our lives. And that peace began to navigate us through the things of life. Because before we didn't have peace, we were messed up and we didn't have that peace. But when that peace came upon our life, we were open, our our hearts were open. And today we can live in God's peace. So when you're surrendered, there's a peace of God that comes upon your life. James 4, 7 reads like this is, therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. That's why our pastor said it this Wednesday. Come back to church. Come back to church. Come back to family life. Low. Go to Bible study. Come back to church. Do whatever you got to do because when you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. When you lift your hands and you worship and you begin to pray, God begins to speak to your heart. And when our lives are surrendered and submitted to God, the devil no longer has a foothold in our lives. You know, there's people today that, that can't live in peace and that live in madness, that live in, in, in anger because the devil has a foothold in, our, in their lives. But I, I remember the, the, the day I surrendered and submitted my life to God is the day that the enemy could not have authority over my life anymore. Because I began to understand the anointing and the power of God that came from heaven that began to reign upon my life. I needed to learn that. But something different just began to happen within my life. See, a surrendered life is a fearless life. It's a fearless life. Now, I know that today there could be some things that get us nervous and get us afraid. But I got news for you. When God is in the center of your life and God is in control of your life, there is nothing to be afraid of. See, the disciples had the door locked for fear of the Jews because 
of the betrayal against Jesus. But Jesus tells them, peace be with you. And there is no reason to fear. See, because Jesus brings peace in the midst of any storm. Psalms 50 verse 15 says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. So if you ever run across trouble... If you ever run across a circumstance, if you ever run across a storm, call upon the Lord and he will deliver you. And that's what I've experienced the last 29 years serving the Lord. I've called upon the Lord and he's delivered me. He's encouraged me. He's helped me through some of the most difficult times within my life. So I want you to know through the storms and through the difficult times, call upon the Lord. He will deliver you. He will strengthen you. He will anoint you. He will give you what you need to get through that situation because of his peace. See, when your life is surrendered... You are not afraid to call upon the Lord at any time you're in trouble. See, we have access to our Heavenly Father. And when you realize you have access to your Heavenly Father, that's when something really begins to stir within your life. Because now you start talking to Him. And what is that? That's simply prayer. You start praying. And not just praying and asking for things, but praying and asking, God, fill me with your anointing. Lord, use my life to be a vessel to make an impact in this hurting and dying world. See, we can live in peace because of a life that is surrendered. We can live in peace. And I know there's many of you here today that live in peace. My brother Johnny right here, he lives in peace. Johnny, come on up here. Come on up here. Tell them about the peace of God within your life. Well, every morning we wake up in the morning, we we get into the presence of God. You know, our pastor spoke about that, spoke about being in the presence of God, and there's nothing like it. You know, uh, at one time, my life was chaos, drug addicted for 18 years, ran around the streets, crazy, wild, involved in gangs. But once I put my eyes and I directed my life, and I asked God to come into my heart. He gave me a peace that surpasses all understanding. Now I don't have to go and drink from the world. I drink from the word of God. Amen. God bless you. And if you look at his mugshot, he has one. You see pain and anger all over it. But you look at him today, you would never think that he had a mugshot. That's because of the peace of God upon his life. So the first thing is that we need to surrender. The second thing now is that we see. We surrender, and now we see. We see things different. And when we see different, you are no longer the old man. You're no longer the old man. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You are no longer that old criminal. You are no longer that drug addict. You are no longer that person that society has said about you. But now who you are, you are a child of the Most High. You are what God says about you through his word. We are no longer that old man. And when we begin to uh, uh, see different, we start looking at ourselves different. You know, not with, with pride or that we have it all together. But we, 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 we begin to walk with humility and gratefulness within our lives. See, when we see a new life in us and in our family, things don't have to be the same way that they were. And I know for some, you know, that, that maybe just recently give their life to the Lord, you say, man, you know what, it's, it's sometimes it's so hard to see that. And I remember f- feeling that same feeling. There were people in the church that were serving the Lord a long time, and and they had some things together within their life. And I remember coming in, broke down and busted up straight out of the county. They said, man, that's good for you, but I don't know if it can happen to me. And I remember them just keep telling me, if it can happen to me, it can happen to you. But you've got to stay faithful. You've got to stay put. You've got to stay coming to the house of God. 
And I remember, as I would say, faithful, just keep coming and keep coming and keep going. I, I began to get breakthrough, get a job. My, my marriage began to get strong. I even got married. And we, 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 we got married in the church office. My, my kids began to grow in the house of God. We got stronger and stronger and stronger. And then I began to see things didn't have to be the same. So I want to tell you here today. All you got to do is you keep coming, you keep coming, you keep getting involved, you keep growing, and you're going to see things are not going to be the same. There does not have to be anger, pain, a bad attitude within your life. You don't have to have those things within your life. Your life does not have to stay the same. You may say, how does this happen? Well, Ephesians 4.23 reads like this. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. And you know, sometimes it all starts with our mind. We got to put on the new mind. We got to be renewed by God's word every single day because of all of the filth and the madness that has been put into our lives and the destruction that has happened within our lives. And sometimes, you know, we need to be reminded of of what God says about us, that we are his children. So we need to put on the spirit, that new spirit of our mind, the new man. And the word of God renews our mind. And we need to hear and believe what God says about us. You're more than a conqueror. You don't have to live in defeat. You don't have to live in pain. But you can live in peace and joy and happiness because we are his children. And when does this this need to happen? It needs to happen every day. I don't know about you, but I I need the presence of God every single day. I need to get up in the morning. I need to pray. I need to read his word. I need to have communion with God. It needs to happen every single day. And when we see, uh, uh, when we, and then when we see different, then we realize this peace and joy just does not belong to us, but it's for others. And that's when we begin to start telling people. Because there's something that is stirring within our lives. And I believe that that's what the church should be. When something is stirring within a church and there's a church that is excited and there's a church that is on the move, we should not keep it to ourselves. But we should be in the streets. We should be in the marketplace. We should be around our families, our coworkers, and telling them what God has done within our lives. And this is why Jesus told the disciples, now I send you. Now I send you. And what we got to do is as we are sent, because we're all going to be sent. You you know, you ain't going to live here at 4235 National Avenue. You're all going to go to your communities. You're going to go to your houses. You're going to go to your neighborhoods. You're going to go to your workplace. You all are going to leave this place. But as we are sent, what do we do when we are sent? We preach the gospel. We tell people about the goodness of of Jesus. Give the Lord some praise this morning. Come on, give the Lord some good praise this morning. Number three, we just don't surrender, but then we see different. But now here's the third and final point, is now we serve. We surrender, we see, now we serve. See, when we serve, we'll serve with the power that God has given us. And I know many times as we come into the house of God, we we come in and, you know, uh, it could be a little intimidating maybe to get involved. But I'm I'm grateful for the people that pulled me in. Because when they when they pulled me in, they they begin to encourage me, you know, and I I'm I'm not that gifted. I don't I don't have a lot of gifts. I'm not like Pastor Markey. I don't sing. I don't play the keyboard. I don't play the drums. I, I don't got all these little giftings, you know. God's anointed them. But I, I, one thing I, you know, I, I learned to do is, is work hard, be a servant, you know. And they began to say, hey, you know, why don't you come help me? I said, all right, I'll help. You know, I just, I'm serving. I'll help. I said, what are we going to do? Well, my ministry is I clean the toilets. I said, praise the Lord. Okay, all right. Just tell me what to do. Give me a little scrubber. So I remember we would go in and 
and, uh, uh, and, and we'd go in and we'd set up the church and then tear it down. And uh, we, would, we would go early and uh, they would say, you know, I go, what time do I got to be there? They said, we got to be here about two hours early. I said, two hours early? To church? And I said, all right. And they said, and then we're going we're gonna to clean up after. I said, okay. How long is that? We're going to stay about two hours after. I say, so you mean I got to be in church all day long? And they, and they said, no, don't look at it like that. Look at it as you're doing something for God. And I'm like, okay. I didn't know nothing. I'm, okay, if you say so, I'll do it. But I remember, I remember going and, and, and getting there early. And cleaning up and setting things up, pulling cables out and setting up speakers and setting up the projector and serving and doing those things. I remember tearing down and cleaning the toilets, picking up the trash and sweeping the parking lot and doing all those different things. And I remember the Holy Spirit just began to speak to me and say that, you know what, now you could do some of these things for me. And I know it may not see that glamorous, but you ain't behind a cell no more, and you don't have to worry about getting high and watching your back anymore. But this is just the beginning of what I'm going to call you to do and be for my glory and for my honor. And I remember the Holy Spirit speaking to me. And as I began to do that, then I remember something began to stir within my heart. I began to serve, serve in the children, serve in the sound, serve in the usher. I served in every ministry, served in hospitality, served in parking lot, served in all these different ministries. And as I began to serve, something began. To, you know what it did? It kept me busy. It kept me active. It kept me involved. It kept me connected to the body of Christ. And God knew I needed to be connected because the world was trying to connect me. My old friends were trying to connect me. The old drug was trying to connect with me. But the, but the, but the pull of God was connecting me even stronger. And that's why I submitted myself. I surrendered myself. And as I began to do that, breakthrough began to happen. See, you don't have to be perfect, but you just got to be willing. You just got to be willing. Galatians 6.10 says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those who are of the household of faith. See, we do good by using our gifts. And how do we use our gifts? By getting involved. So if you're here today and you're not involved, just get involved. You may say, where do I get involved in? Well, tonight is the night to start. Come to the New Beginnings class. Come to our Relentless Men. Come to our Relentless Women. Go to a Bible study. Talk to any one of our ushers. Talk to any one of our mister, ministers and begin to ask them, how can I get involved? Because when you get involved, then all of a sudden you're going to find yourself growing and something experienced uh, uh, special within your life. Give the Lord some praise this morning. Come on, I'm almost done. Come to the keyboard, Matthew. So how do we do good? We do good by using our gifts. And see, this is where the church begins to come in. This is where we can experience our gifts. You know, I, I, I'm grateful for the ministry because the ministry allowed me to get involved and, and get connected. But, you know, one of the things that, was, that really helped me is that as I got involved with the ministry, I began to build relationships, began to connect with people. You know, back in the day, you know, I was the type of person, <clears throat> I, didn't, I didn't hang around a whole lot of people, you know. It was just me, my brother, and my cousin. And anybody else that would try to get in, I would push them out. You know, it was just, it was just us. And even when I would get high, I wouldn't even share. I would just get high by myself. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You know? Like, take a hit, pass it. What are you doing? Hurry up. Come on. Let's go, 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 go. So it came back to me. I was like, you know, Bogart and everything. You know what I'm talking about. But I did it. I wanted to be by myself. But the church helped me to break out of that. The church helped me to build relationships. The church began to come around me. I learned how to be civilized. I learned how to, to, to connect and communicate. And so you, when you get involved, you start building relationships. And I remember when we got involved with the church and the ministry, beautiful people began to surround us. People began to encourage us and help us. Because I didn't know a lot. Like I said, we didn't know a lot. 
You may be here today and you may not know a lot. Listen, here at Victor Outreach, one of our values is family. We're family here at Victor Outreach San Diego. We spend a lot of time together. We spend birthdays and celebrations and, man, all kinds of parties yesterday. And so many families would come together, would come together and celebrate together. Because some families, you know, you're not used to doing that. But I'm grateful for a church family that where we can all come together and celebrate our birthdays, our children, and weddings, and all these different things. And even as, you know, funerals, the family of God comes together. We just had one for a precious sister this past week. And the family of God was able to come around the family during these difficult seasons. And that's what the, the church of God should be as we come around together as a family. And many times we don't realize the gift we have until we begin to get involved. And that's when it begins to be developed. VOSD is where you could develop your gift. VOSD is where you could shine and where you could develop and build relationships. You know, there were people that came to our Easter production and they began to say, oh, you guys hired actors. I know some of you are thinking, man, I, I know I'm good. I didn't know I was that good. Stay humble. But they didn't come in singing and dancing. But they began to develop their gift on here. They began to develop their gift in children. They began to develop their gift in the ministry of the house of God. So your, 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 your gift is developed. But then look at your gift. It's used to impact people. Uh, Brother Adrian, he's on the worship team and got, you know, used him to, you know, he was acting on, he was a drama, but it was a powerful scene. And that powerful scene impacted families just because of the, the gift that he has. There's so many, there's so many that are singing. Uh, Pastor Marky and Misha every, that was singing that communicated the message of the gospel. They didn't come in like that. It developed here. And they began to build the relationships here. But look at what happened. God was able to use that gift to make an impact within our city. See, when your gift is mixed with the power of the Holy Spirit, then you're going to impact lives. And that's what God wants. God wants our gift to impact lives. See, if Jesus, if we tell others about the saving power of Jesus, then people around us won't stay stuck. Catch that. There may be people around you that are stuck, that are in pain and that are miserable, because you're not exercising your gifts. People are stuck around us because we're not exercising our gift. And as we begin to exercise our gift, there is a releasing of miracles that will take place. So, what am I, what's the message here today? Now what? New beginnings. Now what? What do we do? Here's what we do as we go. We get involved, and we start putting our hands to the plow and telling people about the goodness of God. And you don't have to have all kinds of doctrinal, uh, Betty credits and all this knowledge in, 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 in your arsenal right now. All you've got to do is just be willing. All you've got to do is be willing to tell somebody about what has happened within your life. Or maybe you've been serving God a long time and, and maybe you need to rekindle. The, all you got to do is just jump back in. You already know how to swim. You already know how to do some things. Just jump back in and start doing what God has anointed you to do. That's what we do now. We build the kingdom of God through our lives. So you may be here today and you may say, you know what? I need the church. I need the house of God. Even to this day, 29 years later, I still need the house of God. I still need 
the ministry, even though I'm over so many things, I still need the ministry. I, I, I need the fellowship. I, I need the people of God around me. I need to come to this facility, and I need to come, and I need to serve because it does something inside of me. And when your heart is stirred and, and you're doing something for God, then all of a sudden there's a freshness that comes upon your life. So today is the perfect day to start fresh. How many of you are ready to start fresh? Come on, Victor Outreach. How many of you are ready to start fresh? Stand to your feet with me here this morning. We're going to open up the altars here in just a moment. But before I do, what does John 3.16 say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that everlasting life is even for now because it's everlasting. And today, I don't believe we have to live in the past. I don't believe that we have to live in any of the things that God has delivered us from. We are new creations. We have a new beginning. And we have a fresh start. If you say, you know what? I need the church. I need God to move in my life. And I need a fresh start. You could be new or you could be here a mighty long time. But you know you need the house of God. If that's you here this morning, meet me at this altar. And let's go before the Lord. And